Hi there. So on Wednesday the 23rd of March at around 20 to 3 in the afternoon, Khalid Massoud, a 52 year old Kent born man, hired a car from a depot in Birmingham and drove it across the pavement on Westminster Bridge with the intent of harming and even killing pedestrians along it. He ended up crashing at the railings near Parliament and he left his car there, ran into the building and stabbed a police officer. He was then shot by another armed police officer. In this attack, five have been registered dead and 50 injured. One of the dead includes the police officer PC Keith Palmer, who was unarmed at the time, and the injured include three children from a school in Brittany, France. ISIS have claimed responsibility for this and their statement reads, A soldier of the Islamic State has carried out the attack in response to appeals targeting nationals of the coalition countries. Masood was known to the police. He was investigated by MI5 and he was released as he was no longer deemed a threat. He's been in prison for grievous bodily harm, possession of weapons and public order offences. It's suggested that he was most likely re-radicalised in prison. I would just like to point out at this moment in time, prison staff in the UK have been pointing out that they're afraid to report on Islamic extremism for fear of being called racists. But one of my biggest fears about this attack is just how numb everyone seems to be becoming to this. I mean, it's as if this is just normal to be expected. We have leaders saying things like that. We have, for example, Sadiq Khan, the mayor of London, who um, said back in September of 2016 that terrorism is just part and parcel of living in a big city. We had Manuel Valls, the uh, Prime Minister of France, after the Bastille Day attack in Nice, he said that France must learn to live with terrorism. And there, there was an RT article that was, was talking with a panel of experts, and the title of it was, High Alert is the New Normal for America and Europe. But why should this be? Why should we expect terrorism? Why, why don't in countries with really tight immigration controls, such as Japan, why don't they have to deal with this terrorism? You know, why, why should our citizens live in fear? Is it because, what, some globalists have a multicultural agenda? I mean, seriously, think about this, right? How many people said we have to learn to live with mass murder whenever Anders Breivik shot people, whenever James Holmes shot people, whenever Adam Lanza shot people? How many people said then we have to learn to live with this? What's the difference? Oh, right. They're white. That's the difference. When when it's white people, oh yeah, you can post your uh, headlines reading, if you want to stop mass shootings in America, consider banning white people. Could you imagine if someone wrote an article title like that about Khalid Massoud? Because what? Because he's brown? Because he's Muslim? Fuck you, that is ridiculous. That is absolutely ridiculous. The liberal media jumped all over the opportunity to get judging uh, straight white men whenever um, James Holmes and Adam Lanza and, and Anders Breivik done this. But yet, when a Muslim does it, we must stand in solidarity. Fucking hell. These Islam apologists seem to ignore the link between rising Islamic terror attacks throughout Europe, such as the ones saw in France in 2016. Look at how many were committed in that year alone compared to previous years. They seem to ignore these links between that and the rise of immigration from Islamic countries. Gaddafi pointed out in 2010 that if the European Union didn't give him 4 billion euros to help stem the tide of migration, that Europe would become black. The West refused to listen to him, and once Libya fell after his murder, they just started pouring in. Libya was the gateway, like he said, it was the gateway for Africans to the European Union. We need to recognise that Islam is, is spreading throughout Europe and, and the world. I mean, take for example, um, Muhammad is now the most popular boy's name in London. And there's also been a recent um, study by the Pew Centre that has suggested that Islam is going to be the majority religion by 2070. Now, I'm not trying to suggest that all Muslims are, are violent or extremist or anything like that there. But I'm just trying to say that this particular group of migrants are different from any of the ones that we've saw before. For example, British Muslims think 
that the UK is made of 75% Muslims. Why is that? Well, I'll tell you why it is. Because they live in little enclaves. They live in these little groups that segregate themselves off from the rest of society. They don't want to assimilate. They don't want to hear differing opinions. They just want to live in these echo chambers. And as, as, as a result, they never get countered. I mean, this, this is what happens when you have a religion that, that thinks that violence is an acceptable way to, to uh, respond to someone who criticizes your God. And uh, apologists will also say things like, oh, but foreigners were injured and died in this attack too. As if somehow that makes it okay or something. Oh, yeah, it's okay, you know. You know, plenty of other people died too. Yeah, I'm aware of that. That doesn't mean it's okay. That doesn't mean that we can ignore it. That doesn't mean we can bury our heads in the sand. It's as, as if this means... You know, it wasn't done by Islam or something. I, I don't, I don't get what your point is. It was still an Islamic attack. Why does it matter if 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 other people were harmed other than than white people? I mean, for all you know, th those other people injured were just collateral. You don't know that this person intended to harm other people and white people, for example. But again, it's it's just. You, you don't see any of these type of attacks coming from Christians or atheists or Buddhists or Hindus or any other religion really. You don't see these same types of attacks occurring. Now I'd just like to point out, I am aware that Khalid Massoud was British born and that he's not one of the migrants that came into Europe. But as I said, there is a link between the rise of Islamic extremism and this group of migrants and that includes... The fact that someone who, a British Muslim who was born in the UK, could be re radicalized by a group of migrants coming from a very radical state in the Middle East. And as I said, it seems to be suggested that he was re radicalized in prison. And once we consider that uh, prison staff in the UK are afraid to, you know, address the issue of terror cells in prisons in the UK for fear of being called racist, it's quite possible that, 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 that this group of migrants coming over, so, some of them who committed crimes ended up in jail, and obviously they have much more uh, radicalised views than, than typical British Muslims, and so they, they could have radicalised them, but, but the point is, I'm trying to draw a link between the, the immigrants coming in and the rise of radical Islam Islamization across Europe. So finally, I would like to address an RT article that criticised Nigel Farage for some comments he made about the incident. I'm kind of surprised at RT for this because normally they're anti-globalist, but um, this, they seem to have taken a different stance on this. But um, it's, it's just curious to see anyway. So Nigel Farage was talking about how uh, Theresa May was keen to state the um, attacker's nationality and he made a comment saying the government will always try to emphasize that because they're so embarrassed about their immigration policies and obviously he was referencing that they were trying to emphasize his nationality to detract from the fact that he was actually a Muslim. He says in the second statement, look the point is that we do have radicalization going on inside our country. Some of it is going on in state-run schools and state-run prisons, and that is something I think we could really deal with. And I agree with him on that. I think that is something. We, we can't just bury our heads in the sand and hope that that disappears by itself. Some people criticized him. Someone called Simon N. Ricketts tweeted, Nigel Farage is 52 and from Kent. So is the attacker. Will we tackle this problem of 52-year-olds from Kent? <laughs> That's, that is such an unbelievably stupid fucking thing to say. I mean, seriously, are you trying to suggest that there's a problem of extremists coming from Kent? What, with, with, with one Kent man having committed mass murder and, and, and injuring a whole bunch of people? That, that's a trend to you? you? You think that is any way comparable to Islamic terrorism? You're a fucking twat. MEP Seb Dance also tweeted, the likes of Farage are useful idiots doing the terrorists' work for them. Seeking to divide people based on religion, race, or origin is sick. <laughs> I'm sorry, are you trying to suggest that Nigel Farage drove that car for Khalid? <laughs> no, I don't think so. I think what he really means by this statement is that people, um, their, their actions and their words can influence the minds of others and can drive them to do things like this. But really, let's put this in context. 
who do you think is honestly more likely to make Khalid Massoud do something like this? Nigel Farage or a bunch of hate-preaching imams? Because I know where my money would be placed if I were placing a bet on this. But the funniest thing is, I thought Islam was supposed to be a religion of peace. I mean, shouldn't they react to to criticisms and, and, and stupid comments such as Nigel Farage's with, with, with peace, with pacifism, just like Mahatma Gandhi? And finally, Emma Kennedy said, If it were up to me, I'd take Nigel Farage and Katie Hopkins' British passports and tell them to fuck off. That's kind of hypocritical, isn't it? Because this is a multiculturalist suggesting that we should remove someone from a country because of their beliefs. Hmm, it almost sounds like deportation. But I'm guessing that Emma Kennedy isn't for deportation. Anyway... My thoughts really do go out to the families and friends of people affected by this tragedy. And I don't say these things to get in a moral high horse. I say these things because I genuinely want something to be solved here. I don't think that this is the type of thing that we should expect to occur. No one should have to live with this type of fear. Feel free to leave your uh, thoughts in the comments below. Thanks very much for listening.